Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am DM Bloodworth, and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video is going to be a continuation of my uh, coverage of Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition, the, uh, the Rule Supplement Splat Books, and today I'll be taking a look at the complete book of Gnomes and Halflings by Douglas Niles. So uh, if you've been following this series, uh, especially once I started getting into the complete book series of the uh, the different races. So I've done uh, dwarves, elves, and now I'm doing gnomes and halflings. I'm kind of following them in alphabetical order. Um, each one of these books seems to be so far uh, written by a different primary author. This one by Douglas Niles, who is, you know, legendary in... Uh, in Dungeons and Dragons, uh, you know, TSR history, and uh, a great writer, and uh, really looking forward to doing a deeper dive into this. But what I'm doing with this series of videos is I am just going through the table of contents and looking for differences from one author to the next, from one racial complete book to the next, and seeing how the races are being uh, dealt with differently from one book to the next. Now, I will take a look at this one here because I'm doing them in alphabetical order. So this is not necessarily in their release order. And this book here was, um, was put out in 1993. So it does follow the other two books, which were both 91, I believe. So, um, so let's start taking a look at the table of contents of this and see how it's handling. Now, the other big difference that you can already see here is that uh, gnomes and halflings are kind of not being shown any kind of real love by not being given their own separate books. So um, I, I have a feeling that there's, there's probably less information on gnomes, per se, or, you know, than halflings. But, um, but we'll see. We'll see how it uh, rolls out as we go into that table of contents and look. Now, I will say this. Um, other than humans, halflings are my, you know, they are certainly my second best uh, character class to play in Dungeons & Dragons. Um, I played some of my longest time with a halfling thief who eventually became a thief acrobat, um, probably running from around 1980 through... 1987, 88, when I stopped playing uh, AD&D First Edition. So, um, so my my longest lasting character lasted. Uh, that was my main character for AD&D First Edition. Uh, ran that character for about eight years uh, through, and then that was playing practically six days a week. So it was a lot of uh, sessions. Put in on that character over the course of all of those years. Um, so yeah, halflings are uh, the second most common character race that I play. Uh, I most often play humans, uh, but I but I haven't really I don't play that often. Uh, so I'm usually the the forever DM uh, for the games that I do run. So. Here we go. We're going to jump right into this. I apologize for the, the flip through. I'm going to have to do a few uh, changes here just to clean it up for you. So here we go. And um, yeah, so I'm just going to have to do this. There we go. Oh, that wasn't too hard. All right. So the complete book of gnomes and halflings. Now, first thing I noticed right away is that the table of contents is a totally different uh, different format here. So now we have icons for uh, for the sections, and it's an introduction to small folk, and it goes into gnomes first, and it's talking about gnomes in uh, second edition, new stuff about gnomes, then it goes into the myths of gnomes, so the gods of uh, gnomedom, Gar Glittergold, uh, Beverin, uh, Wild Wanderer, uh, now, some of these I recognize straight from um, straight from Dragon Magazine initially, and then uh, they made their way into uh, Greyhawk. I don't know which ones translate over into Faerun. 
Although I do have some sense that most of them do follow through uh, to Faerun as well. Gods, most oftentimes, the deities of Dungeons and Dragons can cross over into different realms or worlds, um, you know, because they're deities. And so that that's usually the case. Um, then we get into the gnome subraces, so rock gnomes. Uh, I always tr was trouble with this one. Sphere de Neblin are deep gnomes. Tinker gnomes, which are Minoi, and forest gnomes. Oh, I, that was a thing I wasn't ready for. Uh, gnomish culture, so their festivals, their fires, their marriage and family, the nose knows, food and drink, gems, craftsmanship, trade, taboos, emotions, humor, animal friends, warfare, magic, wandering, uh, gnome character kits, so you have the gnomish character kits uh, based on their classes as well. So you have the fighter kits for the breach gnome and the goblin stinker. Uh, thief kits for the mouse burglar and the tumbler. Illusionist kits, which is the image maker and the vanisher. Multi-class multi kits, the buffoon and the stalker. Priest kits, which is the rock tender and the tree lender. Um, is a tree lender or a tree tender? Uh, kind of hard to read that. Uh, let me let me see how, what this does. No, that doesn't work here. Uh, yeah, I, I don't like this particular flip through, um, you know, of it. Uh, then we get to halflings. So we spend about fifty eight pages on gnomes, and then we switch over to halflings, and halflings in A D and D second edition. New stuff about halflings, the story of Little Man, a general history of halfling race, gods of the halflings, uh, goes through the list of the gods of the halflings. Uh, then we get to halfling subraces, so you have the Harfoot, the Stout, and the Tall Fellow, Kender, Athasian halflings, that one I'm not familiar with, and the Furchin, All right, also one I'm not familiar with. Now, I'm getting ready to run a second edition uh, campaign, and so I am going to, you know, over the course of running that campaign, I am going to become much more familiar with AD&D second edition, you know, as a dungeon master. So, you know, please bear with me. Just consider this an unscripted and unchained. This is like my first look into these books as well. And so we're kind of sharing that experience. That's the whole purpose of this channel is for, you know, for us to share these experiences, sometimes for the very first time, even on my part. So um, Halfling Culture. So the name Halflings, the hearth and the burrow, the family growing up. Um, uh, susten, sustenance, I'm sorry, and more, so what they eat, uh, that would be an easier way to put that. Um, the village, craft, labor, and products, trade, society, norms, and taboos, joy and humor, sorrow and anger, riddles, villages and shires, warfare, tactics, magic, why most halflings are homebodies, and why some halflings pursue adventure. Uh, halfling character kits, and so you have uh, their fighter kits are the archer and the walker, uh, forest walker. You have the homesteader, the mercenary, the sheriff, the squire, the tunnel rat. Thief kits are bandit and bilker, burglar, smuggler, and urchin. Fighter thief kits are the cartographer, the trader, the traveler. Cleric kits are the healer the leaf tender, and the oracle. A uh, typical halfling village uh, is an appendix that uh, adventure suggestions for gnome and halfling campaigns. All right, so uh, let's just do a, a little flip through here and take a look at some of the art. Um, so this is the art that I use for the thumbnail, obviously uh, Larry Elmore, and uh, you know, really impressive. Uh, which is why I like to pull these thumbnails now uh, from the from the color art that really stands out to me. Uh, but we go through and uh, 
and you can see there's there's quite a lot of like really interesting things in here that you can um, that you can pull from and uh, that's what I really like about these splat books is the fact that you don't have to use everything it is all rule supplements it's all optional rules but there are a lot of really nice gems that are in these um, in these books or you can use them in their entirety it's it's entirely up to you uh, the nose nose the big nose schnozola uh, is an important status symbol among all the gnome subraces parents proudly point out the size of their children's noses and make enthusiastic propagandistic uh, propagandation prognic prognostication sorry um, about future growth okay uh, the practical applications of such facial features are admittedly limited gnomes will frequently embark on size contests with heavy wagers between all right so really really interesting stuff so they're they're really proud of their large noses the larger the better um, and then we'll get to uh, halflings when we get to here we'll start taking a look at the halfling section a typical gnomus village and you can see mostly underground and now we are into chapter three halfling culture so And let's see what jumps out here. I want to say this is Elmore as well. The Archer. Thief Kits, the Bandit. I typically play halfling thieves. Once in a while, a halfling fighter. And halflings take us all the way up to page uh, 127. So all the way up to page 127. So the book is split, you know, roughly 50-50 between the two. <clears throat> and um, again it's uh, you know great to have in the collection you know the um, the condition that this book was in uh, is, is still very very good for something going back to 1993 um, so uh, you know really really good pickup I picked up most of these splat books on uh, on eBay uh, anywheres from like thirty to forty dollars a piece. Uh, they might be running a little bit higher now, um, so I'm really glad that I did pick this up. About, you know, I started collecting my AD and D second edition uh, stuff about two years ago, and uh, and I picked it up in large, you know, large quantities at one time. So it's like if I saw one seller selling like three or four of the books, and then I was like, hey, can you? combine them up in shipping and make that a little bit cheaper and then you know I always bargained with them to let me get a, a slightly lower cost on this and and whatnot to see you know how that worked out and you know how that would work out and a lot of times you know they were very open to the idea of doing so so um, as always I hope you enjoyed this video uh, please remember to uh, subscribe and uh, hit the alert buttons for for these things and uh, you know uh, like and comment uh, especially comment I you know really enjoy listening or reading your comments and then responding to them as well now as I've said before I will do deeper dives into the books that have the most engagement right so if I get a lot of people that watch you know a particular video and uh, comment a lot on it and ask specifically to see certain parts of the book 
you know, for me to go into a deeper dive into certain parts of the book, then that is what's going to guide me in my second round of going through all of the splat books from AD&D second edition. Um, so that's something that I, I really do encourage you to do is to, um, you know, is to let me know which books you really want me to do a deeper dive on. And I will certainly get around to doing those uh, based on your uh, based on your requests. Uh, that being said, uh, I am I am not going to be too active uh, video wise over the next couple of days. I have a big family wedding to go to, um, so that is going to take me out um, the remainder of this you know this afternoon and this evening, uh, all the way through maybe Friday while I'm sitting at the hotel alone while my my wife and kids are getting ready. Um, I, I might throw out a video uh, from the hotel room, uh, you know, tomorrow uh, morning, and then um, tomorrow night is the wedding itself. Then Saturday morning is a uh, is a breakfast brunch. I may be home Saturday afternoon, um, you know, or early evening. So I will try to get something out there. I'm pretty sure I won't get to my Shadow Dark uh, game on there, but for my players in Shadow Dark, just be on the lookout if you are still available for Saturday night. There is a possibility I can run something, um, you know, but if not, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll give you a heads up uh, if I get home too late on Saturday, or it's just not going to be uh, something practical for me to do. I'm, I'm hoping we can, but I wanted to just give you some heads up that that might not happen. Uh, and then uh, and then Sunday I got another family event, but I should be home by Sunday afternoon. And uh, by Sunday evening I should be doing something, whether it's a live stream or, um, you know, just continuing picking up some more of these uh, videos as well. So you all have a great one uh, and um, have a great rest of your week. And I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen or at a convention sometime soon. Take care.